in San Diego. Uh, I've been there currently almost four years and I love it there. So let's get into the safety moment first. We're gonna talk about heavy lifting and we'll talk about the ABCs of heavy lifting. Uh, when you go down to pick something up, you wanna bend your knees. You wanna have good posture as you're bending down to pick it up. And as you stand back up using your knees, you wanna hold whatever you're carrying as close to your body as possible. And then as you get up, You want to actually, as you're getting up and you have the package close to you, you want to tighten your ab muscles a little bit. Helps you with your posture and keeping your spine straight. And then you never want to, as you're carrying, twist your body. You always want to move your feet as you're, as you're carrying the box because you can greatly hurt yourself. Okay? Today we are going to do, we're going to talk about sous vide. And sous vide translates to under vacuum and it was invented in France over 40 years ago, okay? Sous vide is basically poaching inside of a sealed bag under very precise and measured conditions. The water in your cooking vessel is regulated at a specific temperature, is circulated to maintain consistency, especially for proteins. Very little, if any, extra fat has to be added to the package and the protein cooks in its own juices, which leaves it moist, tender, and juicy. Uh, there's basically three steps to sous vide. Basically, uh, put in a pot of water, set in your time and temperature according to the desired level of doneness that you want. Uh, putting your food into a sealable bag, clipping it to the side of the pot, or you can just stick your food into a Ziploc bag push it down into the hot water, and it's a water displacement method, and the air comes out of the bag, comes up over the protein, then you can, you can zip lock your bag and then and clip it to the side. And then basically you take it out of that, after it's come to the desired time and temperature, you take it out of the sous vide water, the circulating water, you can take the protein then, and you can actually chill it down, and this is what I do a lot of, I take that, I'll chill it down in an ice bath, get it cold, and then I'll leave it for three days if I want. Then when I'm ready to eat, I'll come, I'll take it out of the bag, I'll pat it dry, and then I'll sear it in a pan, total of five minutes, and it's done. Because it's already fully cooked through. Uh, and basically, when you want to finish it, you can either sear, you can grill, you can broil, and basically you just want to get a nice... Um, golden and crispy exterior, you know, for your product to be done. So first video I'm going to show is me sous vide in a ribeye steak that I did at home. And then basically I'll sear it at the end and you'll see the finished product. And then I thought it'd be really nice to do a bigger piece of protein. So I found a video on YouTube and it's um, doing a smoked brisket, but if you don't have a smoker, you can do one actually in the oven. And then basically after that video, I'll tell you how I do mine at home, okay? So Jennifer, can we run the first video, please? Today we're gonna do sous vide steak, okay? I wanted to show you guys what a restaurant sous vide machine looks like. Nice and big, the bigger container and the bigger machine so you can do a bigger piece of meat or bigger volume. And then I have this Avanova here that I use at home too. And it does smaller size, smaller portions, okay? Today we're gonna do a ribeye, ribeye steak. So this is one and a half pounds of ribeye. Get you a side view right there, okay? For flavor, I add a little pat of butter and I added some fresh thyme to it. And then put it in a vacuum seal machine, vacuum bagged it. And then basically, I got my Avanova set for 54 Celsius, and this steak for rare is going to take one hour. So I'll put it in. I'll push it down. I'll put a clip on there, and I'll make sure that it's all the way down. And then I'll set a timer, and I'll leave it for one hour. So it's been an hour. Pulling the steak out. Can 
tell that it's cooked through. Right now it's rare. I didn't sear the outside and I'll end up doing that. Right now you could either let the steak sit in the bag and chill, or you could pull it straight out, pat it down dry and sear it, or you could take it and put it on an ice bath, chill it down properly, and then put it in the refrigerator and you can have it in three or four days. You pull it out of the bag and then when I sear it, I'll show you exactly how to do that. But you can do this with poultry, pork, any type of protein. You can cook to this stage, chill it down in an ice bath, and then cook it in three or four days or five days or six days. So I added the oil to the pan, starting to shimmer and almost starting to smoke. I seasoned our sous vide ribeye. I patted it dry with two towels to make it sure it's nice and dry, season both sides. And now I'm just gonna lay it in the pan. And you wanna hear that nice sizzle as it goes in, okay? Susan, see? As soon as it goes in, I want to add a little bit of fresh thyme. A couple of garlic cloves and some rosemary. Now you can season this whatever you want, whatever fresh herbs you have. If you have some sage and you'd like a little bit of sage flavor on there, that's fine. But usually I like to do it with a little rosemary, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of garlic. I'll end up probably searing it on this side for probably about four or five minutes. And then I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side so we can get it even. And basically I'm just looking for a medium rare to get this steak. And as soon as it gets there, another four or five minutes on the other side, then I'll pull it off and I'll let it rest for about 10, 15 minutes before I start slicing it. Cause I want those juices to go back inside and keep it nice and tender and juicy. So it's been about four minutes. I just flipped it on its other side. Nice caramelization on the on the top side. Looks beautiful. I'll do another four minutes here. And then we're actually gonna add a little bit of butter and then we're gonna baste it the last maybe minute. So it's cooked four minutes on the other side. And I'm gonna add a little pat of butter. And we're gonna start basting it. Probably do this the last minute of cooking. Get some extra flavor on there from the butter, the thyme, the garlic, the rosemary. Turn the fire off. Take it over here and we'll let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. So it's rested about 15, maybe actually 18 minutes. And I just sliced the first couple pieces. Look at how beautiful that red is from the top to bottom. Can't wait to put that in my mouth. Pretty simple, you know. Um, and the, the thing I really like about this method of cooking is you can cook anything, any vegetables. Um, I do fried chicken. Uh, basically cook all of the chicken fully, then chill it down and basically stick it in the buttermilk. Then I flour it, stick it back in buttermilk, stick it in the flour and then fry it. And basically I'm just looking for the outside to get crispy again. And then it warms through and it's perfect. Uh, and it's re the thing, you know, the nice thing about this way of cooking, I'm saying again, but um, is uh, you can plan your whole week off. You can have all your proteins cooked in bags, chilled down, ready to go. And then basically you're looking at five, six minutes 
to finish your protein, you know? So it just simplifies everything as long as you plan ahead. Okay, so let's watch the uh, brisket. And I really like this video. I mean, I watched it and if you don't have a smoker, it just makes things so much easier. Can we start that video, uh, Jennifer, please? My favorite thing about brisket is the heavy black pepper flavored crust that's on there. People call it a bark. Ben and I keep going to barbecue places and we keep getting the brisket and it comes out really dry. So we wanted to make our own by using techniques that we've been using at Chef Seps. We found a couple tricks that actually help you get around that at home without a smoker and get a really nice succulent brisket. This is gonna make a juicier brisket that rivals any you find in the South. Best brisket ever. Let's get started. This is a whole brisket. They call it packer from the breast right here. As you can see on the top of the brisket, there's a lot of fat. We trim a good portion of that heavy fat cap off, but you can trim as much or as little as you want, honestly. A lot of people think that the fat helps to add like moisture and juiciness to the brisket. It's not necessarily true. Next, we're gonna brine it. The brine is pretty simple. It's just a mixture of smoky salt, brown sugar, and liquid smoke. If you're gonna brine this, um, it takes about five to seven days at least. The shortcut we found is we like to inject it with that brine. We'll just inject all along here and in both muscles on the point just to speed that up. And then we'll pop it back in the fridge uh, in the brine for 24 or 48 hours. Last step we'll do is add a little bit of our pink salt, the nitrite to the brine and that's going to give us our smoke ring. You don't want to let it hang out in the nitrite brine for more than about two or three hours otherwise that smoke ring can get pretty thick. The smoke ring is purely for appearance. It's not going to change the texture or flavor in any way. Once you're done brining then you want to glaze it. Our glaze is a mixture of liquid smoke, molasses and a little bit of liquid aminos or soy sauce just to add a little bit of extra umami and saltiness. We'll brush it with the smoky molasses glaze and then cook it sous vide for 24 hours. We like cooking at 68C that gives us a nice mix of like that well done brazy brisket texture but still low enough that it doesn't cook all the juice out of it. Once it comes out of the bag, we just like to dry it off a little bit and we just get our little glaze that we made earlier and brush it all over. This is gonna help with color and flavor. It's also gonna make the surface tacky so that we can add our brisket rub. Uh, pretty classical. It's heavy on black pepper. It's important to like really get that bark on there because with the, the tip here, it's so thick, you really want to get a nice crust on it so you get those heavy aromats and those black pepper flavor throughout every bite. Once you have it coated in your rub, we like to put it into a low temp oven around 125 Celsius, 130 Celsius, somewhere in there for three to four hours and that's going to develop that super rich just bark that uh, is really like the star of any brisket. Once uh, you're satisfied with where your bark's at, then pull it out, slice it up, and you're ready to eat. What did Meathead say about it? Best brisket I've ever had, ever had. Okay, so we've been really excited that you guys were coming. We had some other development we were working on in regards to bringing the outdoor cooking indoors so people in their apartments and homes can get that traditional barbecue experience without the equipment. And since you guys are the experts, you guys have been doing barbecue for so long, we thought we'd make it while you were here and get your feedback. It's like, look at it, it's just gushing. Breaking into a loaf of bread here, I want to see the gushing crown. juice. Oh my god. Yeah, that looks like the real deal. And and he's got a smoke ring. Ben did it. Mm. Oh my god. Ryan. Oh, look at this piece right here. Smoke ring. Ooh. Juicy. That's bark. hot. The bark and the liquid smoke have melded together so perfectly, you cannot tell that there's been liquid smoke added to this. But this is absolutely one of the most extraordinary briskets I've ever tasted. I think this is like the best brisket I've ever had. So that was an awesome video. Uh, the way I do it at home is I don't really have a lot of time to cook a brisket at home for 11 hours. So I basically take mine, I rub it the day before, stick it in the refrigerator. The next day I'll take it out. <clears throat> I'll put it in the smoker for three hours, pull it off the smoker, put it in a vac bag, and then I'll smoke it. And I can chill it down at that point and do it whenever, but basically then I'll put it back in the sous vide machine and cook it for 24 hours.
And basically when I do that, then I try to plan ahead a little bit. And then uh, the last time I did it, I did ribs. I did some St. Louis ribs too, smoked those for three hours and then chilled them both down and backpacked them. And you can even freeze them at that, at that point and then just pull them out. And then I sous vide I sous vide whenever I have the time to do it because basically sous vide for 24 hours is a long time. But the nice thing is it's right in the control of your house. You're doing it the night before, you know, you can plan ahead. So it's an awesome way to cook. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the videos and to learn a little bit about sous vide. Is there any questions? Hey, Chef, can you talk about some tips on buying beef and, and what you look for when you're buying a piece of meat? Um, I always look for firm, always being red, no brown color or anything, fat is white. huh? Um, and I always try to buy the best I can because um, prime is the usual cut that I always buy because I want more fat in there for flavor because fat is flavor. Um, and basically, I usually get all my meat from Costco, and Prime just seems to be better quality, better flavor, and usually it's only a buck more a pound, so, you know, in the long run, you know. Um, I always tend to buy bigger cuts of, I'll buy a whole, you know, I'll buy a whole Prime rib, ribeye roast, and then I'll portion that into steaks, just like I did, you know, for that pound and a half. Because, uh, you know, I'm feeding four people here, so a pound and a half usually works, you know, a couple slices for each person. And for seafood, um, I tend to go to a seafood house. Typically, it's hard to find them around here. I mean, up here in Orange County, we have Santa Monica Seafood Outlet that you can go and purchase seafood at. I don't buy it at a grocery store because I just don't like the quality. The only grocery store I do buy it at is Whole Foods. And basically, I'm looking for firm not oily, not slimy. Um, usually I'll open the package and I'll swipe my finger across to make sure that it smells fresh. It doesn't smell, um, it smells like the sea basically. And that's all you want. And then if you're looking at fish with eyes in them, you wanna make sure that the eyes are clean and the gills are red. Okay, hopefully that answered your question. Any other questions? You can put it in the chat too if you'd like. How was the state, Jeff? Oh, it was awesome. And by the way, uh, since I'm making this video, and that, I did the video about a month ago. Um, currently right now I'm doing some, if you can see that, I'm doing some carrots right now, and that takes about an hour. And then uh, I froze, I usually portion them out and freeze them and then Tonight, my wife wanted another ribeye, so we're going to do another ribeye. That looks so good. Hey, Marvin, it's uh, Raymond. How are you doing today? Good. How are you, Ray? I'm good. Um, my uh, my connection's a little shoddy right now. Um, I wasn't sure if uh, you mentioned what your favorite uh, thing to sous vide is. Actually, it would be the ribeye, Ray. Okay, nice. That's what I was figuring. I, I, I've been in and out, and um, and uh, I saw it. It looked great. Um, That's something that I haven't really been able to uh, do too much. My uh, The last uh, kitchen I worked at, we had a sister kitchen that had a uh, sous vide machine. Nice one. Um, you know, I know there's some restrictions here in California as far as using cryovacs and whatnot, so... Um, do you guys have those similar restrictions where you are? Yes, we do. We basically have to have a HACCP program to do that. Uh, we do have a vacuum machine at, at currently at Intuit in San Diego, and we use that to vac a few things, but basically we're not thermocirculating anything at there right now because we do not have the HACCP program. Um, the other thing I like to do is, you know, especially, I mean, I did both the video, the brisket, I've done the brisket, I don't know, four times, and every time I do it, it's so tender and juicy when you pull it out after 24 hours. I mean, and I'm a big sucker for braised, anything braised, you know, that's been cooked for a long time. And 
that thing comes out awesome, you know. And I'm always trying to do different things. That's I think the sure. next the next thing I'm gonna to good, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think the next thing I'm gonna try to do is maybe some duck comb fee and see if I can do that. See how it comes out. Oh, there you go. That sounds good. Yeah, because nothing's uh, better. Nothing's better than cooked in fat, huh? I was, <laughs> um, you ever do anything like a uh, foie gras or anything in something like that? No, I've never done that in um, thermocirculated before. Uh, but yeah, something interesting, you know. I haven't ever done it at my job. All right, either, thanks so again, man. Great presentation. Thanks, Ray. Any other questions out there? Okay, thanks everybody. I had a really fun time doing that, and hopefully uh, you learned something, and maybe you'll go out and buy a sous vide cooker. Thanks. Have Jeff. a good weekend. Great. Thank you.